Screen Directors Playhouse stars Dick Powell, Jane Wyatt, production Pitfall, director Andre de Tote. <laughs> Hollywood screen directors present a play on human frailty. The motion picture drama Pitfall, starring Dick Powell and Jane Wyatt in their original roles of John and Sue Forbes. Johnny! Johnny! All right, all right, all right, I'm coming. Your breakfast is on the table, dear. Where else would it be? What? Uh, where's Tommy? He's already left for school. Better hurry, Johnny. You're late this morning. Oh, so what if I am late? Hey, you're in a sweet mood. You think the Olympic Mutual Insurance Company would go out of business if I didn't walk in the door at exactly 9 a.m.? You never can tell. Oh, come on. Eat your breakfast. Oh, honey, I was voted the boy most likely to succeed. You were voted the prettiest girl in the class. Something should happen to people like that. Well, something did. We got married. So, now you've got a family to support. Oh, I know, dear. You've been reading Tommy's geography books again. You've got the wanderlust. Glamorous Borneo, dusky Danes. Sounds a lot better than glamorous Olympic Mutual. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not hungry. Oh. What time will you be home tonight? Now, why do you ask that? You know to the second what time I'll be home. 6.55. Just like last night, the night before, the night Old be- man routine's really got you down, hasn't he? How about trying to work up a better mood when you come home? Yeah, sure. Well, I'll see you at 6.55, right on the nose, just like last night. Good morning, Mr. Forbes. Anything particularly good about it? Well, I really hadn't thought. Uh... That weird private detective is waiting for you in your office. McDonald? Mm Mm-hmm. You know, they ought to put that guy's eyes in jail. Oh. Hello, friend. Hello, Mac. What do you want? Just a kind word and a pat on the back for a job well done. What job? Smiley embezzlement case. I've located about 4,000 bucks of the money he stole. He had it well hidden. Where? Mona Stevens, 427 Stockton. Did you talk to her? Yeah. I wasn't too busy looking at her. You know, I don't blame this guy, Smiley, for robbing his company. Does this Mona Stevens have the cash? Oh, nothing so crude, friend. Smiley bought her little pretties, a fur coat, things like that. You know, I'll bet you never thought of me as a man who could fall in love. You'd be surprised how little time I've got to think about you at all, Mac. If you want me to, I'll have another talk with this Mona Stevens today. I intended to, anyway. Your part of the job is finished, Mac. The company will handle it from here. What's the matter with me handling it? You'd string it out just to keep seeing the girl. What business is that of yours? Look, our company is liable for 10000 of the dough Smiley embezzled. We hired you to track it down. You located a girl who's wearing part of it. Now, we'll handle it from here. If you wanted more jobs from this company, you'll leave it that way. I get it. You want to handle this babe personally? Get out, Mac. You don't mind if I see her on my own time, do you? Not at all. Now, get out. Okay, okay. But just remember, Johnny, I saw her first. Uh, Miss Stevens, I'm John Forbes, Olympic Mutual Insurance Company. Oh, that was a cute kid you sent over to see me yesterday. Oh, McDonald? Oh, well, he isn't with our company. He's a private detective we use sometimes. He shouldn't be let out without a keeper. He's got more hands than any man I ever met. Well, I'm uh, sorry if he annoyed you. I suppose you're after the presents Smiley gave me? Well, I'd like a list of the articles if you don't mind. Oh, you would. Hmm. Okay. I've got a fur coat. It's not much good. A new car. He made the down payment. A few dresses. And this engagement ring. It's not a very good diamond. It's the first engagement ring I've ever had. I'm sort of fond of it. I'm sorry to have to do this. I don't think you are. Well, believe me, I don't enjoy this sort of thing. No. No, I don't suppose you do. In fact, I don't imagine you like it or dislike it. What do you mean? You're a little man with a briefcase. You go to work every morning and do what you're told. Today they said, go recover some stolen goods. Tonight, when you're having a beer with the boys, you'll say... 
You ought to see the babe I met today. Not bad, but you know me. Strictly business when I'm on the job. Is that the way you've got me sized up? That's the way. How should I be? If you were a nice guy, you'd cry a little bit with me before you took the ring. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. At this time of day? Why, according to statistics, insurance men drink one and three quarters highballs every day, but only after sundown. You know, if I thought I was turning into the sort of guy you just described, I'd, I'd shoot myself. I've even got the gun. Well, let's try the drink first. If that doesn't work, I'll make a deal with you on the gun. <laughs> Come on, let's go. I know a little place down the corner here. We can... How did you happen to get mixed up with a cheap crook like Smiley, Ma? Just lucky, I guess. Mm. Maybe he's cheap, but... He's not really a crook. He was just too much in love with me. He wanted to get me things he couldn't afford. Are you in love with Smiley? He was nice to me. That means a lot. Why do you ask? Oh, just curious, I guess. That's flattering. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, I guess I'm a little out of practice when I jump out of my briefcase. I'm sorry I laid into you like that at the apartment. If I'm like the guy you described, I had it coming funny. You don't seem like that now. Maybe the change has something to do with you. You keep looking at your watch. Do you have to be someplace for dinner? No, no. I don't have to be anywhere. Uh, what are you going to do? Have dinner with you. If you want. I want. Here's the dinner. Hello, Johnny. What? What are you doing in my garage, Mac? It's 2 a.m., Johnny. You've been at Mona's all evening. Don't tell me you were talking insurance. Stay out of my business, Mac. I will, as long as it doesn't interfere with mine. I told you I like that girl. I don't care what you like. Quit meddling in my life. And don't ever let me catch you prowling around my home again. You won't, Johnny. <coughs> you won't? <coughs> <coughs> I make up my mind I want something, Johnny. I'll do anything to get it. Remember that. This will help you remember. There. That tape will make the ribs feel a little better. Uh, thanks, Doc. Stay home in bed here all day, and we'll see how you feel by tomorrow. How much did they get, anyway? Oh, well, I was, uh, I was only carrying about $20. Well, there were two of them, or he could have handled them, couldn't you, Dad? Yeah, 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 I suppose so. I don't know why you don't let me call the police. It frightens me to think that those two men could be waiting for you right in your own garage. Well, they won't be back soon. Well, maybe if they come back, you and I could get them, Dad. Tommy... Why don't you show the doctor to the front door? Okay. Come on, Tommy. Let me know how things are in the morning. Is there anything I can get for you? Yeah, some boxing lessons. Johnny, what really happened? Oh, I'll be up in a day or two, Sue. There's nothing to worry about. All right, Johnny. All right. <laughs> Thanks for meeting me here, Mona. How are you feeling? Oh, much better. I, I've been laid up a day or two. I know. I caught sort of a cold. Yeah. And... Mac told me about it. Oh. You don't think he'd overlook the chance to play hero in front of me, do you? I didn't come over here to talk about Mac. All right. What shall we talk about? Well, a couple of things I should have mentioned before and didn't. Like your wife and little boy? I... Yes, I... I'm sorry, Mom. I rather imagine you are. I wish I could make it up to you some way. Can you? Oh, I... No, I guess not. What's going to happen to you? What do you care, really? Honestly, Johnny, aren't you a little relieved to get out of it this easily? I could be nasty, but I'm not going to be. Mona. Why do guys like you do it, Johnny? 
If I had a nice home like you do, I wouldn't take a chance with it for anything in the world. I'll do anything I can, Mona. Will you really? All right. Go home. Stay there. Do me a favor, Johnny. Go home and stay there. You sure know how to build model planes, Dad. This one only took you three nights. Your father knows just about everything, Tommy. In fact, I'd say he's a genius. You know, I'm, uh, I'm forced to agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, are we going to take a trip this year? Trip? Well, I don't know, Tommy. Why? Oh, I get tired of the same old town all the time. Uh, what's the matter with this town? People all over the world would like to live here. But, gee... That's the trouble with your generation. You don't appreciate the things you have. Well, if you aren't the strangest man I ever married, what brought all this on? Contentment. That's the secret of happiness, and don't you forget it. All right. I won't. Now, come on. I'll take you both to the movies. Oh, boy, I'll get my coat. You know, you were sounding like a man who sold on his home, Johnny. Well, maybe it's taken me a little while to find out what I've really got here. The security and the... Oh, oh I, I, I get it. Hello? This is Mona, Johnny. I've got to see you. It's terribly important. Could you meet me at that bar tomorrow noon? Why, uh, uh, all right, yeah, I, I, I'll see you then. Something the matter? Hmm? No, 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 Sue. It's just a, just a business call. Uh, uh, what were we talking about? Well, you were saying some very fine things about home, family, and security, as I remember. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, come on, let's go to the movies. I wouldn't have bothered you unless it was necessary, Johnny. Oh, I know that. What is it, Mona? It's Mac. I don't know what to do about him. McDonald? What has he done? He won't leave me alone. He comes to my apartment all the time. Why haven't you told me before? I thought I could discourage Mac. I even threatened to call the police. He said if I did, he'd... he'd go to your wife. He knows I don't want to cause you any trouble, and he holds it over my head. Oh, well, so that's it. Well, I'm glad you told me. Don't worry about Mac, Mona. He won't bother you anymore. You can depend on it. He won't bother you again. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Johnny? Yeah, Johnny. <clears throat> this is just a warning, Mac. And if you're smart, you'll take it seriously. Leave Mona alone. If I ever hear that you've threatened to do anything about my family again, I'll kill you, Mac. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Pitfall, starring Dick Powell and Jane Wyatt, with Raymond Burr as McDonald. been sitting in this jail for three months, Smiley, getting out tomorrow. So I thought you had a right to know what's been going on. What are you trying to do, McDonald? I don't know you. Why'd you come down here to the jail to see me anyway? Well, it's like I say, friend. Doesn't mean a thing to me. I just don't like to see a man get a raw deal. Who's getting a raw deal? And, and who's this guy, Johnny Forbes? Forbes is the insurance man who took back all the stuff you bought for your girlfriend, Mona. What? He's a nice-looking guy. I guess Mona took a fancy to him. What are you trying to tell me, McDonald? Calm down, Smiley. How do you know so much about everything? I didn't mean to get you riled. And how do I know you're telling the truth? I guess I better go, pal. I was just trying to give you a break. You say his name is Forbes. Johnny Forbes. Look, you're getting out tomorrow, Smiley. I'll be waiting for you outside. We can talk about it some more then. You know, Johnny, I don't mind your reading the paper in bed, but 
There's no point in just staring at it for half an hour. Sorry, Sue. I'll, I'll put out the light. No, wait a minute. Something's been bothering you for weeks, Johnny. Don't you think I know? Look, either it's a marriage or it isn't. If you've got problems, they're half mine. Maybe you wouldn't want half of them. Well, whether I want them or not, I... I have a right to them. I... Oh, I guess you do at that. Sue, I... I, I don't know how to tell you this. I... Daddy! Mother! It's Tommy. Come on. <laughs> honey, honey, what is it? I don't know. Someone's coming after me. Probably had a nightmare. He's ringing wet. I saw it. Where, Sonny? I don't know. Maybe the window. Oh, nothing was coming in the window. See, there's nothing here. You just had a bad dream. I... Hey, wait a minute. Is this what you were reading before you went to sleep? Yes. Well, no wonder he has nightmares reading those comic books. Where does he get them? His grandma sent them. I'll burn them tomorrow. Well, while you're at it, send her a little, too. <laughs> Love to, darling. But it so happens it was your mother this time. Oh. Well, uh, everything okay now, Skipper? I, I guess so. What makes a dream, Daddy? Well, the mind, mostly. It's like a very wonderful camera. You know how a camera works. Oh, sure, it takes pictures. And that's how the mind works, too. It takes pictures and stores them away. Now and then, one of them comes loose in our sleep, and that becomes a dream. So, the trick is to take only good pictures, and then we'll have only good dreams. I think he's asleep, Johnny. He'll be all right now. You know, sometimes I'm awfully proud of myself. Why? For giving Tommy such a wonderful father. He thinks you're the greatest guy in the world, Johnny. Uh, he could be wrong. My son is never wrong. What were you about to tell me before Tommy's nightmare? Oh, uh, uh, just something concerning the office. We, we'll talk about it. Oh, I'll, I'll get it. Hello? Is this Mona, Johnny? Has Smiley been there? Smiley? Yes. He got out of jail today. Mac's been buying him drinks all day and gave him a gun. He ran out of the apartment a little while ago, and I can't find him anywhere. He's coming over to kill you. Oh. I don't want him hurt, Johnny. And I don't want him thrown in jail again. I'll take care of it. I'll come right over. I know how to handle him. You can't come over here. My family's upstairs. Well, well, don't let Smiley in, Johnny. I won't. I'll call you after I talk to him. Who was it, dear? Uh, nobody. Nobody? What do you mean? Well, it was uh, just a business call, honey. Uh, don't come downstairs. I'm coming up. How'd you and Tommy like to go to the movies? What? You get him up and dress him. Are you out of your mind? It's nine o'clock. You can catch the last show. Oh, Johnny, what's come over you? I'm not going to any show tonight, neither is Tommy. But he's sound asleep. What's the matter with you? Well, there's, there's, a, there's a man coming from the office. I wanted to talk to him alone. Well, we've got more than one room in this house. You can talk to him downstairs. All right. Tommy. I just wanted to tell you that I heard you and Mother talking. And whenever you want me to go to the picture show with you, I'll be glad to. All right, Tommy. All right, Sonny. Now go on back to bed. Okay. Dad, where'd you get that gun? Well, I... In the army, son. Now, now go on. Hurry. All right, Dad. Good night. Come on, Forbes. Open up. It's Smiley. I know you're in there. This is a gun, Smiley. Turn around and get out of here. Are you Forbes? I'll talk to you tomorrow. Why not now? You're drunk. Give yourself a break. Beat it. I'm not kidding. Did Mona call you and tell you I was coming? Smiley, I mean it. Get moving. All right. And don't come back. I'm coming in, Forbes. Don't do it, Smiley. Don't do it. I'm coming in. No! I'm over here, Sue. Turn on the lights. Johnny. You better call the police, Sue. I just killed a man.
Oh, I... Hello, Mona. I thought it was Smiley. Smiley's dead. He's... What? Johnny shot him. Oh, no. No. Worked out better than I thought. Smiley dead? Johnny... Wait a minute. How do you know these things? Oh, I was around. Well, come on, Mona. I'll help you pack. Pack? Sure. Sure, there's nothing for you around here anymore. I thought we'd take a little trip. Now, let's see. Let's put a few of your things in the bag. Smiley wasn't a bad guy. Really? He was a nice guy. It wasn't enough. Enough for whom? Me. People were born to have certain things. I was born to have you. So I arranged things that way. You'll get used to me, Mona. You'll learn to love me. Mona! I, I really loved you. Johnny. Huh? Johnny, it's almost midnight. You've been sitting in that chair for an hour. Well, I... Now, the police are all gone. They said there'd just be some routine questions and then the inquest. I know how terrible you must feel about this. But you couldn't help it. He was a prowler trying to break in. You did what you had to. You've got to try and forget it. Sue, Sue, I want to talk to you. I've got to get this thing off my mind before I go crazy. This man I killed tonight, he... He, he wasn't a prowler. I don't understand. I knew he was coming. He had a good reason for wanting to kill me. A better reason than I had for killing him. But well, why should anyone possibly want to kill you? Because of his girl. Somebody told him a lot of things about her and me. Were they true? Yes. I wanted to tell you about it. I tried to tell you I... Oh, Sue, please say something. There's a man dead. I killed him. I can't go around with that on my conscience. Conscience? You make it sound like a dirty word. You worry about your filthy little conscience. But I've got our son to think about. I thought about that too, but I ended up covering one lie with another. Now a man is dead. I can't lie anymore. I wanted you to know before I went to the police. You're not going to the police. You lied before. You found it easy. Now you've got to lie. If you drag this family's name through the dirt, Johnny, I'll never forgive you. Never. And then Mona phoned me. Smiley was on his way. I, I didn't know what to do. I, I stopped in front and chased him away, but... He broke in. I knew he had a gun, and so I shot him. I see. I've walked the streets all night trying to decide what to do. I finally made up my mind to go to the police, and... Well, here I am. I, I had to kill him. You wouldn't have had to if you'd come to the police in the first place. I've explained to you the reasons why I couldn't. Now that a man's dead, those reasons don't seem very important, do they? If you can find Mona Stevens, she'll verify everything I've told you. We don't have to find her. We've got her right upstairs. For what? She shot McDonald last night. Oh, can I see her? No one can see her. What'll happen to her? If he lives, it's one thing. If he dies, it's another. What do you want me to do? Go on. Get out of here. I can't hold you, although I'd like to. Legally, you shot in self-defense. Smiley was coming to kill you. Just a simple phone call and this whole rotten mess could have been prevented. But no, you had to take things in your own hands. And now a man is dead. That isn't a very pleasant thought to live with the rest of your life, is it? Or don't things like that bother you? Go on, get out of here. How'd you know I was down here soon? I called. Uh, 
I've taken Tommy out of school, Johnny. Yes, I guess that's best. How much does he know about everything? You can't expect to keep too much from a boy his age. I think he should ask for a transfer to some other town. So are you sure you don't want a divorce? I thought about it. There's no use kidding you. I've thought about it a lot. I'd almost made up my mind. And then I got to thinking. If a man has been a good husband, except for 24 hours, how long should he be expected to pay for it? I don't know, Sue. I suppose some people would say the rest of his life. There's no use pretending it's ever going to be the same. Not for a long time, anyway. Maybe never. But we've weathered other things. Maybe we can handle this. That's, of course, if, if you want to try. You know I do. All right. That's what we'll do, then. We'll try. Dick Powell and Jane Wyatt will return in just a moment. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse is proud to present one of the most remarkable love stories ever filmed, Love Letters. And with it, the original team of director and star, William Dieterle and Joseph Cotton. Now, here again are tonight's stars, Dick Powell and Jane Wyatt. Well, Jane, we've got some introducing to do. You mean telling the audience about the director of Pitfall? Right. Ready? Ready. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the man who has made us work nights. Here's the guy who made us get up at dawn. The fellow who's directed such swell films as Ramrod. The Other Love. None Shall Escape. Our director? Andre de Toth. Thank you, Dick. Jane, it was really wonderful the way you put uh, Pitfall through the air. But... Uh... I don't know. Why you complain about, uh, about the long, long hours? hours? Why not? Who's directing who here? <laughs> <laughs> well, think of the time you'd get to uh, get up in the morning if you worked on my farm. You're a farm? Well, what does a director know about farming? Well, I, I learned it uh, at home. At and, home? And where is home? Well, uh, you mean my accent doesn't give me away? Well, not exactly, Andre. Well, uh, that's strange because I'm from Texas. <laughs> Texas? But I heard you were from Hungary. He is. <laughs> well, uh, uh, when I came to this country, I picked a new birthplace. But, Andre, why Texas of all places? Partner, smile when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, besides being a Texan and a farmer, Andre, you're a director and one of the very best. Both Jane and I want to say how much we depended on your help and guidance in Pitfall. Thanks, Andre, for everything. Thanks, Jane. Thanks, Dick. Good night, Andre and Jane. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks. Good night to you, Dick Powell, Jane Wyatt, and Andre DeCote. <laughs> Dick Powell co-stars with Evelyn Keyes in the soon-to-be-released film Mrs. Mike, a regal production for United Artists. Jane Wyatt may currently be seen opposite Gary Cooper in the Warner Brothers production Task Force. Andre DeCote's current 20th Century Fox release is Slattery's Hurricane. Included in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Raymond Burr, Rita Lynn, Sam Edwards... Jeffrey Silver, Ralph Moody, and Dan Riss. Pitfall was adapted for radio by Bob Reif, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley with dramatic direction by Bill Carn. Jimmy Wallington speaking. Listen again next week when we present... Screen Director's Playhouse, production, love letters, director, William Dieterle, star, Joseph Cotton... <laughs> An all-star show follows immediately on NBC.